Magnus Carlsen opens this game with the greatest move in the history of Blitz Chess, a move I've coined the plow. He plows the pawn down the board and his opponent, Daniel Dubov, a Blitz specialist, goes pawn h5 in response. The reverse plow. Now these two guys know each other well. Daniel Dubov was Magnus's second, which means he helped him out prepping for chess during the 2021 World Chess Championship match, which Magnus played against Jan Nepomniashi. So he knows the tricks and traps Magnus goes for. He's not scared. After e4, he goes for c5, a fighting Sicilian, but with these moves inserted. This is title Tuesday, 21st of November, early edition, and what a day of chess drama it's been. Check out my previous videos if you haven't done already. So Magnus goes knight f3, knight c6, knight c3, and now we get g6, a dragon from Daniel Dubov. Magnus trying to make a mockery of the elite level chess players with this opening, but Daniel having none of it. And I say make a mockery in a playful way, by the way. You know, it's all good fun. It's blitz chess. You can mix it up, but don't assume the result of this game. It goes to the wire. Fantastic game. Magnus takes the center. We get captures, knight recaptures, bishop g7, pressuring that piece. Bishop e3 defends, very natural. And after knight f6, threatening knight g4, this whole next sequence of moves, this dance between the players is elite level blitz chess at its best. So queen d2 is played here, not f3. I mean, how many of us are going f3 there just to stop knight g4, protect the center, looks natural. And after knight g4, how many of us are then just blundering this bishop, right? The other half of us, and we just say, okay, we'll take a mangled pawn structure, castle the king. But no, Magnus takes here, he attacks the black queen, so recapturing the knight is forced. Then he goes bishop d4, but Dubov doesn't swap the bishops, doesn't castle the king or anything like that. He goes bishop h6, brilliant move, because he hits the queen, leaves his rook hanging, but obviously there's no time to take it. And after Magnus slides up the board here to d3, well, we can see the problem now with this cat and mouse game that Dubov's come out on top with. He's stopped the white king castling where it wants to go. Now castles was played here, Magnus goes f3 to kick that knight, hang on, isn't white about to get a huge attack, because if the knight retreats, g4 comes, e5 soon, all the pieces flooding at the black king, but that is not Dubov's idea, he plays the brilliant pawn to c5, a temporary pawn sacrifice here, pawn e5 was also a good move. Now Magnus has got to accept that one, and here I thought the idea was then knight e5, which is a decent move because you've distracted the bishop, but even stronger, as Dubov plays, is queen c7, not only hitting this bishop, but looking to check down here, and that's why Magnus didn't play bishop d4, which is the top engine move, but then you allow this queen g3 check, the king has to step to e2, and humanly, it's really ugly to play. So Magnus takes the knight on g4, we get queen captures here, now knight d5, and sorry, running back a move, you can capture here, but Magnus holds off, you know, the queen is still on the square, this rook coming here is also a big counterplay thing, so he hops with the knight, interrupts the connection, and then prepares to capture a pawn. And I said temporary pawn sacrifice earlier, Magnus is actually maybe a full pawn up here, yeah, if we do a count, he's a full pawn up, so it's a full pawn sacrifice, but Dubov's got, uh, Dubov's got the bishop pair, and he's got pressure on Magnus, the king is uncastled. So we get bishop b7, going after this powerful knight, now Magnus takes on h5, the bishop captures here, pawn recaptures, very natural, opening the queen here, but more fantastic play from Dubov. This is why these guys are the top blitz players in the world. He goes rook a to b8. He doesn't go king g7 or something, and then g4 comes, and you're helping Magnus's attack. He goes for counterplay here, and Magnus doesn't take, because actually black is doing great if you let the rook crash through here, and even if you capture a game, well, so what? Rook recaptures, 
who's really attacking whom you know that king's got squares to slide to pieces to cover it etc meanwhile your king is looking drafty on e1 so we don't see captures on g6 b3 now played and another great move from d uh, dubov keep saying his name wrong you know bringing this fight to magnus he goes e6 trying to rip open the e-file towards this naked king now we get bishop e2, very important move to try and protect that king. The pawn is captured, trying to open all the lines to attack Magnus. And now this next sequence of moves is more pleasing than the fact that I am not advertising you these hair dryers in today's video. I was approached, asked to do so. Would my 95% male audience be interested in these hair dryers akimbo? You can do the front and the back at the same time. I said that's probably not going to go down so great. So I did decline. For future reference, I say no to more stuff than what I say yes to. So you don't have to go out there and buy a hairdryer in the Black Friday sale. We can enjoy the chess and this pleasing sequence, starting with King F1. Now, why is this so nice? Well, when this rook hits the E file, Magnus now lifts his rook on H1 up to H3. We get rook E5 and now he takes here, opening the F file with check. I mean, everything just flows together here. He now blocks with the rook and he gets this amazing harmony. All these pieces on light squares is such a common motif when you've got the opposite colored bishops where black for their part, you know, has lots of pieces on dark squares. But how does Ma uh, Magnus, you know, just conjure up this kind of magic? Not that those four moves are insane or anything, but the whole thing of the king being stuck, but now suddenly, unstuck and magnus is better after rook ef5 apparently king g7 was better but this one was played and it walks into g4 again it looks like a move you've got no right playing pushing a pawn in front of your king loosening the rook on f3 but after captures well you can't actually break through the queen does cover the square so bishop g7 played and now the rook is attacked and how many of us here are blundering our queen? Try not to do that one because the bishop is pinned. Not a good way to go. So Magnus instead saves the rook. Now we get queen e7 targeting this pawn and you don't want to touch this pawn or your bishop drops with check. So we get king g2. Taking that pawn immediately was possible, but this is a way trickier move because now if black captures this pawn, there's rook h1. And when you drive back the queen, wherever it goes, well, these are the kind of tactical motifs. Here's one example with the queens coming off the board. And with the h file now closed off to the black king, after you check, well, you have to start interposing with a piece. And of course, this is no good. You're losing a rook and the game. So the pawn was not touched. Instead, we see pawn d4, saving that one now, given that Magnus gave the chance. And now again, a good move. You don't want to capture this pawn. I mean, they're just seeing the tactics so fast in time pressure. If you take this, well, now the rook crashes through, king captures, and the queen invades with check, and then you pick up the loose rook. This should be a draw by perpetual. So coming back here, Magnus didn't touch that one. We see rook f1 guarding that bishop. Now the pawn is threatened. Queen d6 covers. Magnus also centralizes with queen to e4, and now Dubov cracks in the time pressure seconds on the clock he plays the very natural rook to f4 but it's a huge blunder can you see the tactical shot for magnus which he spots in a flash of course and ends the game basically on the spot so the move he played here well done if you found rook takes on f4 after queen recaptures there's check the queen is then about to be lost and this forced resignation, white is an entire rook up. So you have gotta hand it to Magnus. This opening is so much fun and he stormed the tournament, winning by a clear point in the end, Parham second. What a result for him. I hope you enjoyed this game. Do check out the video on screen for another epic game of chess and I hope to see you again soon. Cheers.